1.13 heating and cooling curves. Let's move on to the lesson. Let's first talk about changes um, and phases individually on heating and cooling curves. All right, so the graph that you'll interpret with uh, a heating or a cooling curve is a graph of temperature usually on the y-axis versus time or you'll have a graph of temperature versus heat added so this temperature will always be on the y-axis and either time or heat added will be on the x-axis okay so uh, let's describe these in particular as follows um, if you notice down here I've labeled in blue these T's and these T's are important for the following reasons all right, so let me just circle these first. Um, if you notice, in all six of these sections with these blue T's, you'll notice that you have a sloping line uh, going upward like this, upward like this, upward like this, and downward like this, downward like this, and downward like this. In all six of these cases, what you should notice is that the temperature is um, changing. For example, in here, the temperature is changing from 30 to like 55. And this is from like 55 to, let's say, eight, uh, 90, and so on and so forth, right? So in all six of these cases, you'll see that the temperature is changing because you have a non-zero slope. In the case of these three, you see that the slope is positive because it's pointing upwards, obviously, in terms of its slope. On the other hand, you, here you have non-zero slopes, specifically negative slopes, since they're sloping downward, just like a ski slope, right? So the idea here is you have six slopes like these where they're non-zero slopes, meaning they're either positive like this or negative like these three. So temperature changes relate to non-zero slopes. And during these temperature changes, which I've labeled the blue T's or areas where we have non-zero slope, what you should notice during this lesson is that kinetic energy will change. The reason why kinetic energy changes is because temperature changes. Remember, kinetic energy is related to temperature. So if kinetic energy changes, temperature changes. Okay? Um, in addition to that, what you should know is that since, on since only the temperature is changing and the phase is not changing, uh, the potential energy is constant. Okay? And we'll go into why the phase doesn't change in just a moment. But just notice that only the temperature changes during... Um, these areas of non-zero slope where they're either pointing upwards like this or pointing downwards like this. Okay, so these are where temperature changes here, here, and here with positive slope and here, here, and here with negative slope. So if the slope is non-zero, you have temperature changing somehow. And because temperature changes, obviously kinetic energy changes in relation to that. Because only temperature is changing, um, that actually means that you only have one phase. And you'll find out in a moment. But since there's only one phase, that would mean that the potential energy during these six lines here, 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 and here, here, and here that I've circled just now um, have potential energy being constant. That's because only kinetic energy is changing and only temperature is changing. On the other hand, the potential energy is constant because you only have one phase in each of these six uh, blue T's that I circled. Okay? And just as I stated before, with the potential energy being constant, that's because you only have one phase. What you learn here is that this is a solid, this is a liquid, and this is only a gas. Whereas uh, this is a gas, this is a liquid, and this is a solid. Okay, so the idea here is as follows. Just for this slide, what you need to know is this. If the slope is non-zero, meaning it's either positive like this or negative like this, um, that means that only the temperature changes. Okay, that's the whole idea there. And since only temperature changes, kinetic energy changes as well because kinetic energy is related to temperature. Since um, you have solid, liquid, and gas here and gas liquid and solid here, you obviously have got only one phase. Since you've only got one phase, the phase is not changing. Since the phase is not changing, the potential energy is constant. That's what you should know from there, okay? So there you go. The next thing I want you to know is now these um, phase changes. And these phase changes occur when you have zero slope or a plateau, meaning a flat line. So if you have a zero slope or a plateau, meaning a flat line like here and here, or here and here, um, what you should know is that these um, zero slopes or plateaus where you have flat lines are known as phase changes. And how I've indicated that these are phase changes are by putting them in green like this. So these green P's here where you have flat lines are phase changes. All right, and during these phase changes, since you don't have... Um, the uh, since you don't have the temperature changing, you obviously would know that since the temperature is not changing, since it's a flat line, the kinetic energy obviously would be constant, since kinetic energy is related to temperature. So since the 
it's a flat line, obviously the temperature of the y-axis is not changing. Since the y-axis or temperature is not changing, then the kinetic energy obviously would be constant, right? So there you go. However, since it's a phase change from these zero slopes or plateaus, that actually means that since you're changing phase, the potential energy is changing. If you remember from the last lesson, phase change relates to whether potential energy increases or decreases. So since you have a phase change here, 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 and here in these four green P regions, um, obviously potential energy is changing because potential energy only changes during phase changes, okay? And obviously, since it's a phase change, you obviously have two phases here, 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 and here, okay? So the basic thing to know about these flat lines or these green peas are as follows. These four flat lines or zero slopes mean phase changes. And since the phase is changing, it's... Uh, you also have the potential energy changing since potential energy is related to phase, right? And you notice that the temperature of the y-axis is constant or not changing. Since the temperature of y-axis is constant, the kinetic energy is constant as well, right? And obviously, since the phase change is occurring at these four green peas right here, obviously you would have two phases, right? So there you go. That's the logistics of this slide. You'll, we'll go on to this more throughout the lesson. All right, now let's talk about heating curves. Heating curves um, are curves where... it you show how temperature changes as heat is added to a substance. All right, so heating curves, as the name implies, um, involves temperature changing when heat is added. Heating means you obviously add heat, right? So heating curves show how temperature changes as heat is added to a substance. And the three phases involved in their order of appearance are solid, liquid, and gas. Obviously, solids are a, a cooler phase than liquids, and liquids are cooler phase than gases. So you're going in order of um, hotter phases. So solid is coldest, then you go to a liquid, which is hotter than to a gas, which is the hottest. Hence the name heating curve. It shows that temperature changes as heat is added to a substance and going from a solid to a liquid to a gas, right? Obviously, it's going from solid to liquid to a gas because that's what heating is. Solid is coldest, liquid is kind of coldish, but gas is the hottest. Okay, so let's break down... Um, this heating curve, uh, this heating curve feature, the, sorry, the heating curve features. All right, so what you'll see is that you have positive slopes, just like I mentioned in the last slide. You see positive slopes at 1, 3, and 5 here, obviously, right, because they're pointing upwards like this, up, up, and up, right? During these times, you obviously can see that temperature of the y value is increasing since you're sloping up. Since the temperature of y value is increasing, the kinetic energy will increase as well, because obviously kinetic energy is related to temperature, right? And also, what you'll notice is that these three are only one phase. And since these three are only one phase, obviously the potential energy is constant because the phase is not changing. So since the phase is not changing, potential energy is constant. And obviously since potential energy is constant, in, in, uh, in reverse, that also means that you only have one phase. So the whole logic here is this. During, in heating curves, you have three positive slopes, one, three, and five, like I've labeled up here. You have three positive slopes like this. During these times, obviously, the temperature of y-axis increases. Since kinetic energy is related to temperature, during these times, um, kinetic energy also increases, right? And what you notice is that one, three, and five here are only one phase. Since one, three, and five here are only one phase, either solid, liquid, or gas, that would obviously mean that the potential energy is not changing since potential energy is related to phases. If the potential energy is constant, then the phase is constant or the same, right? Now, in the order of phases, in order of appearance, the phases that I've just mentioned um, when reading about positive slopes are as follows. One is the solid. How you can remember that is solids, or S, are the coldest um, phases that can exist, right? So number one obviously would be at the lowest y value or temperature, so that would be obviously a solid. The number three here would obviously be a liquid, because number three is the second hottest temperature phase. And the second hottest temperature phase, as we all know, is a liquid. It's in between a solid, which is really cold, and a gas, which is really hot. So liquid's in the middle. It's the second hottest phase. So obviously number three here, the second positive slope would be a liquid. Finally, the third positive slope, or the hottest uh, temperature phase would obviously be for five a gas because gases are the hottest out of solids liquids and gases so number five is a gas so in order solid is number one because it's the coldest liquid is number three for this phase because it's um like hotter and gas would be the highest temperature phase or number five since it's the hottest out of three okay 
Now let's talk about these plateaus two and four. But before we do that, let's just quickly like go over this. These plateaus or zero slopes mean the following. Um, during these plateaus or zero slopes, obviously we can see that the temperature is constant because the y value is flat on this graph. The y value is not changing. Since the temperature or y value um, is constant, we obviously know that kinetic energy would also be constant since kinetic energy is related to temperature, right? So there you go. During these two times two and four, the temperature is constant since it's flat, therefore the kinetic energy is constant since it's related to it. However, we realize that this, obviously, one is a solid, uh, three is a liquid, and five is a gas, right? Since two is in between solid and liquid, it can't be one of those phases because it's in between them. It's sort of like a neutral party, right? So since, um, since number two is in between a solid and liquid, what actually happens is that the phase changes from solid to liquid here. It's the in-between phase. Both solids and liquids exist here because it's sort of like a neutral party. It's both solid and liquid at the same time. Since the phase is changing between solid and liquid here, then in this uh, flat line, that would mean that the potential energy here would increase because the phase is changing, right? The reason why the potential energy is increasing from solid to liquid, obviously, as we know, is because solids have little space between them and liquids have more space. Since the space is increasing, obviously, the potential energy would increase as well in going from a solid to a liquid. All right, so there you go. That's the whole idea here. Same idea for number four. It's in between the liquid and the gas. It's not either or. It is in between. Since it's in between a liquid and a gas, um, the phase is actually changing. It is not liquid. It is not gas. It is both liquid and gas. It's a phase change. And the potential energy, again, increases in this interval number four because um, in going from liquid to gas, you're going from liquids, which are like kind of close together, to gases, which are all the way at the corners of the uh, box. Since you're going from kind of close together to very far apart, the distance is increasing. Since during this phase change, the distance is increasing, obviously potential energy would increase because potential energy is related to distance, right? So there you go. The final thing I want you to know, obviously, is that... Um, there are two phases here. For number two, as I just stated, it's both solid and liquid. It's not either or, it's in between. For number four, there's also two phases. It's liquid and gas. It's not either or, it's in between. All right, and obviously, as I just stated, the order of the phase changes are as follows. At number two, we have melting since we're in between a solid and a liquid. And at number four, we have evaporation at number four because we're in between a liquid and a gas. All right, so there you go. So, um... I'm going to erase this for a minute. Try this on your own. Before moving on to the next slide, try to label the phases and the phase changes themselves. Okay? So try that for a minute. But um, you should stop the, the slide and do that uh, right after I go through this review. So let's remember, heating curves show how temperature changes as you add heat to a substance. Heating means you add heat, obviously, right? The order of appearance of the three phases of the substance are solid, liquid, and gas. Obviously, solid is the coldest, liquid's hotter, and gas is the hottest. That's why it would make sense for a heating curve. Now, where you have positive slopes, you realize the temperature of the y-axis is increasing, therefore kinetic energy increases, right? And um, what we'll notice eventually is that, as I just stated, this is a solid, this is a liquid, and five is gas. Since you only have one phase in one, three, and five, you obviously would understand that the potential energy is constant because the phase is not changing, it's only one phase, okay? The order of appearance, as I just stated, is solid for the first um, for the first phase because it's the coldest phase. Uh, number three would obviously be um, liquid because it's the hotter phase, but it's in between the coldest and the hottest. And five or gas would be the, uh, five would be gas because it's the hottest phase out of the three in terms of temperature. Okay, now really quick about plateaus, let's remember um, that the, uh, in this case, in these cases of these plateaus 2 and 4, the temperature is constant, therefore the kinetic energy is constant. And obviously since the uh, kinetic energy is constant, it can't be one phase, it has to be somewhere in between. So here it's in between solid and liquid, and here it's in between liquid and gas. All right. So therefore, you obviously have two phases. Since you have phase changing between solid and liquid here and liquid and gas here, that would obviously mean that the potential energy would have to change. Specifically, how changes in the heating curve is potential energy increases. The reason why is because in going from solid to liquid, you're going from rigid to somewhat further apart. In going from liquid to gas, you're going from kind of close together to very far apart there. Okay, and in order of uh, appearance for the phase changes, obviously, um, two would be melting because it's in between a solid and a liquid, and four uh, would be evaporation because it's in between a liquid and a gas. All right, so that's the explanation for and the rationale for heating curves.
So uh, let's review this right now. Now let's talk about heating curves. I know I talked a lot on the last slide about um, the rationale of heating curves, but guess what? This is just an explanation. This is what you really had to memorize for the region. So definitely focus on the slide because this provides you all you need to know about heating curves. So make sure you please, please, please memorize the slide. All right, so this is what you need to know. The previous slide only gives you a rationale. This is what you really need to know for the regions. So let's break down a heating curve one by one. So AB, uh, which you'll run into as the first positive sloping line on any heating curve, is known as the solid or S phase. And during this time, since um, you only have one phase of solid, potential energy is obviously constant because the phase is not changing. It's only one phase of solid. And as you can also see here, the y-axis or temperature is increasing. Since the y-axis or temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy is also increasing. So how to summarize the solid phase, or AB, which is the first positive sloping line on any um, uh, heating curve is that the kinetic energy and temperature increase while the potential energy and the phase remain constant. It's on only one phase solid. Okay. Next we have BC, which is the first flat line or zero slope that you'll run into on any heating curve. All right. So this first flat line that you run into on any heating curve or BC in this case is known as melting. And during melting, as we know, you go from a solid to a liquid, right? Since you're going from a solid to liquid, you can obviously tell that the distance is increasing between the particles. Since the distance is increasing between the particles, obviously potential energy would increase, right? What you'll also notice is that the um, temperature or y-axis does not change, so therefore the temperature is constant. Since the temperature is constant, the kinetic energy is also constant. Okay. So what you need to remember. So what you need to remember about um, the first zero slope or first flat line on a heating curve le reading left to right, is that first of all, it's melting, meaning it goes from a solid to a liquid. All right, and since you're going from a solid to a liquid, the distance between the particles increases, therefore the potential energy increases. Also notice that the temperature y-axis is constant. Since the temperature y-axis is constant, the kinetic energy is constant as well. So really quickly, the short and sweet version of it is this. The first zero or flat line that you run into on any heating curve is known as melting, where you go from solid to liquid. Therefore, since you're going from solid to liquid, potential energy increases. Also, the kinetic energy is constant because the temperature is constant. That's a short and sweet version of BC, or the first uh, flat line that you run into on any heating curve. All right, CD you'll run into as the second positive sloping line on any heating curve. And what we label this is L or liquid. All right. And uh, during this time, as you know, you only have one phase. Since you only have one phase, potential energy is obviously going to be constant, right? Because the, the phase doesn't change. It's a liquid. So therefore, potential energy is constant as well. Okay. Also, what you notice is that the temperature y-axis is increasing. Since the temperature y-axis is, is increasing, so is the kinetic energy. Okay. So there you go. That's what you need to know about uh, CD. Okay. So in short, C, uh, what you'll know is that the second positive slope on any heating curve is known as a liquid. Since you only have one phase, potential energy is constant. And what you notice is that uh, kinetic energy and temperature are increasing because the temperature is increasing, therefore kinetic energy is increasing. Okay. Next we have um, DE, or the second flat line that you run to on any heating curve. The second flat line that you run to on any heating curve, or DE in this case, is known as evaporation, where you go from a liquid to a gas. Since you're going from a liquid to a gas, you're increasing the potential energy between the particles because the distance between the particles is obviously increasing. What you'll also notice is that the y-axis, or the temperature, is constant. Since the temperature is constant, the kinetic energy will also be constant because it's related to that. Okay? So what you need to know really quickly for the uh, second flat line that you run into on any heating curve is that's evaporation where you go from a liquid to a gas. Since you're going from a liquid to a gas, obviously potential energy is increasing. And also you should know that um, kinetic energy and temperature are constant during this um, second flat line because first of all, the temperature is constant, therefore the kinetic energy is constant. Okay? Finally, we have um, this third positive sloping line, the third and final positive sloping line, uh, which in this case would be EF, but the third positive sloping line on any heating curve is known as a gas. And since during a gas phase you only have one phase, you know that potential energy is constant because the phase is not changing, so therefore neither is the potential energy, right? Aside from that, um, what you notice is that the y-axis or temperature is increasing. Since the y-axis or temperature is increasing, the kinetic energy will increase as well since it's related to that. Okay, so what you need to know for this third positive sloping line on any heating curve, as you read from left to right, is that it is a gas. Therefore, 
potential energy must be constant. Also, what you notice is that kinetic energy and temperature must increase since temperature increases, kinetic energy must increase as well, okay? So there you go. So really quick and short, uh, the first positive slope you run across is a solid, therefore potential energy is constant. Also, what you should know during the solid phase is that kinetic energy and temperature will increase. Next, what you should know is that the first zero slope you run across is known as melting, where you go from a solid to a liquid. Therefore, potential energy must increase. What you should also know about melting or the first zero slope you run across is that um, kinetic energy and temperature are constant. That's because temperature is constant during this phase, therefore kinetic energy is also constant. Okay. The next thing you should know is um, the second positive slope you run across is known as a liquid. And since it's a liquid, potential energy is constant. What you should also know about the second positive slope is that kinetic energy and temperature increase. Because temperature increases during this phase, uh, kinetic energy will also increase during this phase. Okay. Next, you should know, next you should know that the um, second and final zero slope or flat line that you run across is known as evaporation, where you go from a liquid to a gas. Therefore, potential energy must increase in this case. What well, you should also know about the second and final zero slope or flat line is that the kinetic energy and temperature are constant. Because the temperature does not change during this time, the kinetic energy is also therefore constant as well. Finally, what you need to know is that this third and final positive slope is known as a gas. And since it's a gas, potential energy is constant. We should also know about this third and final positive sloping line is that kinetic energy and temperature increases. Since um, temperature increases during this time, kinetic energy also increases, OK? So there you go. Um, so in summary of this slide, um, a, B, C, D, and E, F obviously have kinetic energy increasing in all three cases. The reason why is because temperature is increasing in all three of these cases. On the other hand, B, C, and D, E only have potential energy increasing because there's only a phase change, and specifically during a heating or endothermic phase change, the space between the particles increases. All right, so make sure you memorize everything on this slide as well as the explanations. All right, so now let's talk about a coolant curve. A coolant curve, unlike a heating curve, shows that temperature changes as, as heat is removed. As we know, cooling relates to removing heat from something. So a coolant curve logically shows that temperature changes as heat is removed from a substance. And logically, in terms of the order of phase, you go from a gas to a liquid to a solid because you've got to go from hottest to hotter uh, to coldest, right? So gas is hottest, liquid is like hottish, and solid is coldest. So that's why it would make sense for the order of phase on a coolant curve because you're going from hottest phase to coldest phase, okay? So let's break down the um, general characteristics of this really quick. Um, what you'll notice in 1, 2, and 3 is the following, that you have a negative slope. More specifically, what you'll notice is the following. In all three of these cases, as you know, the y-axis or y-value is decreasing since it's downsloping. Since the temperature y-axis is decreasing, kinetic energy must also decrease as well since it's related to that. Um, what you'll actually realize is that there's one phase in each of the these um, intervals 1, 3, and 5 that I labeled here. Specifically, this is gas, the hottest phase. Liquid is 3, and 5 is solid. Since you only have one phase in each one of these phases, 1, 3, and 5, gas, liquid, and solid, the potential energy is constant because the phase doesn't change. It's only one phase, gas, liquid, and solid. And just like I said before, number 1 is gas, the hottest temperature phase. Number 3 is a liquid, the like a colder-ish temperature phase. And number five is solid, the coldest temperature phase. All right, so that's what you should remember here. Okay, um, for plateau um, or zero slope or flat line, whatever you call it, right? What you'll notice, first of all, well, let's circle these first. What you'll see, obviously, is that in this case, they're labeled in green by two and four. So these are both um, phase changes where you have zero slopes or plateaus or flat lines, right? What you notice here is that the temperature is constant because obviously the y value is not changing. It's a flat line. Since the temperature is constant, the kinetic energy is constant as well, right? What you'll actually notice during this time is that, well, first of all, we know that we have gas, liquid, and solid in 1, 3, and 5, right? What you notice is that since 2 is between um, a gas and a liquid, you don't have one phase or the other. You actually have two phases, gases and liquids. In 4, what you notice is that you're in between two phases, liquid and solid. So you're not either phase, you're in between. You're like a neutral party. So it's liquid and solid in 
number four, right? So what you notice is that obviously since you have two phases, the phase is changing somehow. Specifically, in going from a gas to a liquid, you decrease the distance between the particles. In going from a liquid to a solid, you decrease the distance between the particles. Since you decrease the distance between the particles in going from a gas to a liquid here and from a liquid to a solid here during these phase changes, that means that obviously the potential energy would decrease during these cooling-related phase changes at two and four, right? So there you go. And in order, obviously, it would be condensation in number two since you're going from in between a gas and a liquid here. And number four, obviously, which is right here, would be freezing since you're going from a liquid to a solid here in this phase change, okay? So just make sure you understand the logistics of this slide. And just remember, before moving on to the next slide, try to label the phases and the phase changes. But these are just kind of like logistics and explanations. So focus more on the next slide to memorize what you need to know for the regions. So now let's talk about what we need to know and memorize for the regions. The cooling curve slide, this is incredibly important because you please, please, please make sure you memorize this slide. All right? So um, the cooling curve, please make sure you memorize this slide because it's incredibly important. All right, so let's go section by section. Okay, so let's break this down into five separate sections and deconstruct them and analyze them one by one. So A, B, or the first negative slope that you run into in any cooling curve is known as a gas. During this time, um, what you'll notice is that, first of all, the kinetic energy decreases. Why the kinetic energy decreases during this time is because the temperature decreases, right? So therefore, the kinetic energy must decrease. What you'll also notice here is that the potential energy is constant. The reason why is because you only have one phase, gas. Since the gas phase is not changing, potential energy must be constant as well. Right? So there you go. So what you should know about the first negative slope that you run into on any cooling curve is that it is the gas phase because it's the hottest phase. Because the temperature is decreasing, kinetic energy is decreasing. What you should also know is that since it's one phase, the gas phase, the potential energy must be constant. Okay, so there you go. For, um, for the first zero slope or flat line that you run into on any cooling curve, you should know that is condensation. Specifically, in this case, you are in between a gas and a liquid. So you go from a gas to a liquid in this condensation, fa uh, condensation phase change, okay? Since you're changing phases from gas to liquid, you're decreasing the distance between the particles. Since you're decreasing the distance between the particles and going from gas to liquid during condensation, potential energy must obviously decrease because the distance between the particles decreases. What you should also know is that this is, since this is a zero or zero slope or flat line where the temperature is not changing, the kinetic energy must be constant. So what you should know about BC in really short detail is that um, it is condensation for this first um, flat line or zero slope. All right, where specifically during condensation you go from a gas to liquid. Therefore, the potential energy must be decreasing. What you should also notice is that the kinetic energy is constant because the temperature is not changing. All right, for CD or the second um, negative slope that you run into on any cooling curve, you should know that it is a liquid. All right, and um, what you'll notice during this is that the kinetic energy decreases. Why the kinetic energy decreases is because the temperature is decreasing. Since the temperature or Y value is decreasing here during this fa liquid phase, you can tell that obviously the kinetic energy um, must be decreasing as well, right? What you'll also notice is that since you only have one phase liquid, the potential energy must be constant because the phase isn't changing. It's just a liquid, so therefore... Since the phase isn't changing, now there's the potential energy. The potential energy is constant, all right? So in summary, what you should know for this um, second negative slope or, um, yeah, second negative slope on any cooling curve is that it is a liquid where the kinetic energy decreases because obviously the temperature goes down, right? What you should also know in addition to that is that the... Um, the the potential energy is constant because it's only the liquid phase, okay? So there you go. For DE, or the second and final um, flat line or zero slope that you run into on any cooling curve, you should know that's freezing, specifically where you go from liquid to solid. Okay? Since you're going from liquid to solid during this freezing phase change, you know that the distance between the particles decreases. Since the distance between the particles decreases, the potential energy must decrease as well, obviously, right? What you should also know is that the kinetic energy during this phase change freezing on this second and final um, flat line is that the kinetic energy is constant, and that's because the temperature does not change during this time. The temperature is flat, so therefore the kinetic energy is also constant. All right, so we should know for the second and final um, flat line or zero slope on any cooling curve is that it's freezing specifically going from liquid to solid. Therefore, 
the potential energy must be decreasing there during that time. Also, you should also know that the kinetic energy is constant because the temperature is not changing, okay? Finally, what I want you to know is about this third and uh, final negative slope on any cooling curve. All right, this third and final negative slope on any cooling curve you should know is a solid. During this time, um, since it is a solid, obviously the potential energy is constant because the phase is not changing. It's only one phase solid. Since the phase is not changing and it's only one phase is solid, obviously potential energy would be constant as well, right? What you should also no notice during the solid phase is that um, the temperature is decreasing. Since the temperature during this time is decreasing, the kinetic energy must also be decreasing as well, okay? So there you go. So to summarize EF or the uh, third and final negative slope on any cooling curve that you read, um, what you should know is that this third and final negative slope that you see on any quote curve is known as a solid. Since it's only one phase, obviously potential energy will be constant. What you should also know is that the kinetic energy and the temperature will decrease. The reason why is because when temperature decreases, kinetic energy must decrease as well because they're related to each other. Okay, to very nicely summarize um, this slide, as you can see during A, B, C, D, and E, F, you can see that kinetic energy is definitely decreasing. How you know that kinetic energy is definitely decreasing is because in all three cases, the Y value or the temperature is decreasing. Here, here, and here. So in all three of these cases, the gas, liquid, and solid, since the temperature is decreasing during all three of these um, single phases, you know that therefore kinetic energy must decrease. All right, so during A, B, C, D, and E, F, or the first, second, and third negative slopes, the kinetic energy is decreasing because, as you know, temperature decreases during these um, first, second, and third negative slopes, okay? On the other hand, during the two, um, the, during the two flat lines or zero slopes, what you should know is that potential energy decreases. How you know that is the space between the particles decreases. So let's see proof of that. In condensation, you go from a gas to a solid. So obviously you know that the space between the particles is decreasing because they're coming closer together during condensation, right? During freezing, you go from a liquid to a solid, so obviously, again, the space between particles is decreasing because you're going from liquids, which are kind of far apart, to solids, which are very rigid and stuck together. All right, so in both these cases, from gas to liquid and liquid to solid, the space between the particles is decreasing. Since the space between the particles is decreasing in both this case and this case, obviously, the potential energy must be decreasing during condensation and freezing, okay? So uh, there you go. There's a summary. So again, A, B, C, D, and E, F are the first, second, and third negative slopes on a coolant curve. The kinetic energy is decreasing. How you know that is because the temperature decreases. During the, uh, during the first and second zero slopes or flat lines, on the other hand, potential energy is decreasing. How you know that is that the space between the particles is decreasing. How you know that the space between the particles is decreasing is as follows. Obviously, during condensation, you're going from a gas to a liquid. The space between the particles is decreasing and going from a gas to a liquid, so the potential energy obviously would decrease as well, right? During freezing, you're going from a liquid to a solid, and, and going from a liquid to a solid, the space between the particles is again decreasing. So obviously, you know that potential energy would be decreasing during that interval as well. Okay, so there you go. So make sure you memorize this slide as well as the heating curve slide. The next slide and final slide I want you to memorize from this lesson is melting slash freezing point and the boiling slash condensation point. Specifically, the melting or freezing point is a temperature at which a solid melts to become a liquid, which we know is the melting point, or the temperature at which a liquid freezes to become a solid, which is the freezing point, right? So um, the... So now let's just see it on this graph. Um, the melting point obviously occurs at the temperature of melting on the heating curve. Melting is obviously on the first um, zero slope or flat line. So obviously that would be the temperature of melting or the melting point. All right. On the other hand, on a cooling curve, the freezing point would be here. The reason why is because this um, second and final zero slope is where freezing occurs. And since that's where freezing occurs, the temperature at that point would be called the temperature freezing, or in other words, the freezing point. All right, so the easiest way to remember it is this. Melting point occurs at the temperature of melting on the heating curve, and the freezing point occurs at the temperature of freezing on the cooling curve. So the melting point occurs at the temperature of melting, which is this first um, zero slope on a heating curve, and the freezing point occurs at the temperature of freezing, or the second and final uh, zero slope or flat line on a cooling curve. All right. 
Now we have boiling and condensation point. This is really easy. I'm just going to define it, then I'll go over how to identify them very easily, okay? So boiling point is the temperature at which a liquid obviously evaporates to become a gas, right? On the other hand, the condensation point is the temperature at which a gas condenses to become a liquid. All right, so the fastest ways to identify boiling point and condensation point are as follows. Identify the boiling point by looking at the temperature at which boiling or evaporation occurs, which would be the um, second and final zero slope on a heating curve, the boiling point. The boiling point is the temperature at which boiling occurs, and boiling occurs obviously at the second and final zero slope or flat line of a heating curve. On the other hand, condensation point occurs at the temperature of condensation, which is the first um, zero slope or flat line on a cooling curve. Okay, so the easiest way to identify boiling and condensation points are as follows. Boiling point is the temperature of boiling, obviously, which is the uh, second and final zero slope on a heating curve. On the other hand, condensation point occurs at the um, temperature of condensation, which is um, the first zero slope or flat line on a cooling curve. All right, so very easy way to identify these. So let's remember again, melting point is the temperature at which solid melts to become a liquid. On the other hand, freezing point is the temperature at which liquid freezes to become a solid. All right, melting point can be uh, identified at the temperature of melting or the temperature of um, the first zero slope on a heating curve. On the other hand, freezing point occurs at the temperature of freezing, and freezing occurs at the second and final um, zero slope of a cooling curve. All right. Boiling point is the temperature at which liquid evaporates to become a gas, and the temperature at which gas condenses to become a liquid is the condensation point. The boiling point, the boiling point can be identified by looking at um, the temperature boiling or the second and final zero slope or flat line of a heating curve. On the other hand, the condensation occurs. The condensation point, sorry, occurs at the temperature of condensation, which um, is the first zero slope or first flat line of a cooling curve, okay? So that's how you identify them really quickly and easily, okay? So let's go over the guided practice questions really quickly. This is very quick. All right, so um, it says describe the energy. So we have a heating curve, obviously, and we have to analyze it. Describe the energy of the particles during intervals A, B, and E, F. So, and we have to label what these represent, right? So let's do that. So we have to describe the energy of the particles during these intervals A, B, and E, F, and we have to label what these represent. First of all, we obviously know that um, A, B represents a solid phase since it's the first positive slope, and we know that E, F is a gas because that's the third positive slope on a um, heating curve, right? So A, B is solid, E, F is gas, right? The now we have to analyze kinetic energy and potential energy. As we know, during the solid phase, the kinetic energy increases because the temperature increases. On the other hand, the potential energy here is constant because it's only one phase of solid. And again, that's that indicates that there's no phase change. Okay? Now, EF, again, the kinetic energy increases because the temperature increases during EF. We also know that during this time, kinetic, uh, sorry, potential energy is constant because there's only one phase, the gas. Therefore, there is no phase change. Okay? All right, so now let's talk about B. Um, describe the energy of the particles during intervals B, C, and D, E, and label what these represent, right? So as we know, since B, C is the first um, zero slope, we can tell that that is obviously melting. I'm just going to label that M just for fun. And D, E, since it's the second and final zero slope on a heating curve, we label that evaporation, right? So obviously B, C is melting, which is solid to liquid, and D, E is evaporation, which is from liquid to gas, right? Now, what you'll also notice during this time is that the um, kinetic energy is constant during BC because obviously the temperature does not change. In addition to that, what you should know is that the potential energy increases. The reason why is because the phase changes in a way that you increase the distance between the particles. Specifically, when you're in melting and going from a solid to a liquid, you're increasing the distance between the particles. Since you're increasing the distance between the particles, the potential energy increases. Okay? DE, same idea. The temperature doesn't change because the temperature is flat, therefore the kinetic energy is constant. What you should also notice is that the potential energy increases because you have a very specific phase change that causes the distance between the particles to increase. Specifically, during evaporation, you're going from liquid to gas, where the space between the particles increases by a lot. Since you're increasing the distance between the particles by a lot, um, then obviously during evaporation, the potential energy would also increase by a lot in turn. Okay? So th those are the explanations for B.
In short, potential energy increases because you're going from melting in solid to liquid during BC, where the distance between the particles increases. On the other end, the kinetic energy during BC is constant because there's no temperature change. In DE, the potential energy increases because during evaporation from liquid to gas, you're increasing the distance between the particles. On the other hand, during DE, the kinetic energy is constant because there's no temperature change. That's the sweet and simple version of it. All right, uh, C says determine the boiling and melting points. So obviously the melting point is the temperature during melting, which as we already established occurs during BC. The temperature of melting, if we approximate it based on this temperature uh, axis here, is approximately 40 degrees if you look at the y-axis for temperature. Okay, boiling point on the other hand is the um, temperature during evaporation, and evaporation as we already established occurs during DE. Now, if we establish the temperature, we can just establish the temperature for boiling or the boiling point by looking at the Y value for um, DE. The Y value for boiling, or the temperature uh, for boiling of DE, as we can see on the Y axis, is between 100 and 120, or 110 degrees Celsius for the boiling point. So for melting and boiling point, all you have to do is look at the temperatures at which melting and boiling occur and use the y-axis to determine what that value is. It's a numerical setup, and you just look at the numbers, and you just figure it out from there. You just read a graph from there, okay? Now, D is a, um, a review of what we learned before. It says, which point in the graph has the highest average kinetic energy? So as we know, the highest average kinetic energy, as we learned in a previous lesson, refers to the highest temperature, because they're related to each other. So we have to find the point on the graph with the highest temperature. The point in the graph with the highest temperature is obviously point F because that's the highest temperature or Y value of 120 degrees if you trace it over to the Y axis for the value. So there you go. All right, now let's go over guided practice questions part two for a cooling curve. So it says answer the questions below, obviously. So it says A, describe the energy of the particles during C, D, and E, F and label what these represent. So first of all, C, D, and E, F, let's analyze those. Obviously, since CD is the second um, negative slope on a coulomb curve, we know that it is a liquid. That's what you should commit to memory. Secondly, we know that um, EF is the third and final negative slope on a coulomb curve, so we know that that is a solid. Again, you should commit that to memory. And let's analyze these one by one. CD, we can tell kinetic energy decreases. The reason why is because the temperature is decreasing. Okay. Furthermore, we also know that the potential energy is constant. The way we know that is that there is no phase change. There is only one phase, the liquid, therefore there is no phase change. Since there is no phase change, the potential energy is constant in this liquid phase. Okay. Next we have EF. EF, the kinetic energy decreases. Again, the reason why is because during this uh, interval EF, the temperature is decreasing. Therefore, the kinetic energy must decrease. We also know that the potential energy is constant. The reason why is because there is no phase change. During EF, there is only one phase, the solid phase, therefore the phase doesn't change. Since the phase doesn't change, um, the potential energy is constant. Okay? Next we have, um, we have to describe the energy of the particles during BC and DE and label what these represent. BC, since it's the first um, zero slope on a coulomb curve, we know that as condensation, specifically gas to liquid. DE, since that's the second and final um, um, zero slope on a uh, a cooling curve, we know that that's freezing, specifically liquid to solid. These both you should just commit to memory, okay? During BC, we know that the kinetic energy is constant because the temperature does not change. On the other hand, the potential energy decreases because the phase change involves a, dis a decrease in the distance between the particles. Specifically, in going from a gas to liquid, you're decreasing the distance between the particles. Since you're decreasing the distance between the particles, the potential energy must decrease as well, right? So there you go. Um, DE, on the other hand, Again, during this uh, phase change of freezing, you're going from liquid to solid, right? Since you have, uh, sorry, so since you're freezing here, you're going from liquid to solid, right? What you'll notice during freezing is that the uh, kinetic energy is constant because the temperature does not change during DE. It's a flat line. On the other hand, the potential energy will decrease because the phase change involves a decrease in the distance between the particles. Specifically, in going from liquid to solid, you decrease the distance between the particles. Since you're decreasing the distance between the particles, during freezing, the potential energy is decreasing. All right? So just make sure you review these explanations on your own. All right. Uh, C says determine the freezing and con condensation points. Obviously, freezing points the temperature freezing, which is for DE. If you look on the Y value for DE, you'll find that that temperature is between 60 and 80 or 70 degrees Celsius, right? On the other hand, condensation point is um, 
the temperature of condensation, which is BC. If you look on the y-axis for the temperature of condensation and the temperature of BC, you'll find that the condensation point is 1 to 20 degrees Celsius. And for D, um, the the highest average kinetic energy would be at 0 0.8, since 160 degrees Celsius is the highest temperature, and temperature is related to average kinetic energy. Please complete these homework questions on your own. Thank you very much.